Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. We're here with a very special guest. There's quite a bit of hubbub here because we're starstruck. Uh, the wonderful and fabulous, and as we mentioned, handsome Joey Travolta <laughs> is with us. You're the founder of Inclusion Films. We're thrilled to have you with us Thank here you today. Very much. And, yes. and Joey, I just have to say it. You look remarkably like and share the same last name of one of the most famous movie stars in the world. Is mm -hmm. there a relationship there? Uh, we were roommates. Oh, you were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, so John. We have the, we're, yes, we we have the same mother and father. Yes. We're okay, brothers, yeah. great. But yeah. now you mm -hmm. have quite a resume in the film, television, uh, production business. Tell yeah, us about I've, that. I've done a few. Well, I started out as a singer. And then from uh, singing, I went into, uh, well, let me back up. I started as a special ed teacher. Okay. And during that time, I was uh, also singing. And uh, uh, because of the way I taught, which conditioned me for what I do now, uh, I, as a teacher, I didn't, uh, I performed my lesson plan. So uh, math, art, uh, history, I would write a script and perform it, and my theory was that if kids were watching TV for five or six hours, if I could make my class as entertaining as, entertaining as TV, then I'll hook them in, and it worked, so. Well, actually, I have been over to the Inclusion Films offices and studios, and in Joey's office, there is an album that hangs on the wall with, I think you have an afro in that picture, or a head no, of curly no, no, head, no, 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 curly afro. head of hair. <laughs> It's more hair than I have now. Let's put okay. it that way. Okay, and very more hair. brown. Very brown. I, yeah. well, I was, I was actually, I've been salt and pepper since I was 25. So. Okay. And I think that picture, I think it was 25 when I did that album. So. <laughs> okay. 26, uh, 28 when I did that album actually. Well, I'm deeply curious. What I didn't realize you were a special ed teacher before. Yes. What led you into that field? Well, um, my father. I promised my father I would get a degree. And at that time, I was always uh, a protector of the underdog. I would always uh, help the special needs kids out and whoever would get bullied, because I was one of the jocks. I was in with kind of all the in crowds as an athlete and all that, but I was also very protective from my father who was always uh, a very inclusive person. And I promised him I'd get a degree. Uh -huh. And at that time, there were opportunities for, uh, for a special ed. And so I went into that field and I taught in an orphanage for children uh, for a couple of years back in the So you had a logical 70s. reason to start, but you had a logical, stayed. But you know, when I got, my first day of teaching, it was like the bell rang and I was like, what am I doing? I said, I hate school. I never liked school. I hated school, but you know, uh, all of a sudden I said, well, you know what? I, I know more than these kids know. So, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, well, uh, I'd stick it out, and I, I kind of found a way to teach that I was comfortable with, but the problem was I was putting my paycheck back into the kids, so yeah, right. I would have been broke, you know, if I would have continued, but I always knew I would get back into it. Yeah, but it's amazing to me because it's a, it's a difficult thing uh, working with children on the autism spectrum and children who have other disabilities. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is suited toward it, but clearly you are. You've devoted a lot of your life to it. Um, well, but again, you know, from that background, but as a director mm -hmm. and as a producer and as a writer, I mean, I didn't plan on going into directing, really? but someone said to me, um, well, I'll put money up for this film that you're going to do, but I want you to direct. I said, well, I've never directed. She goes, but you're an actor. You produced. I see the way you work with people. And your people skills are your biggest asset. So as a director, technically I knew what to do, but the gift was making people feel comfortable mm. and ma making actors feel comfortable yeah. so they could perform this. But that being said, craft service PAs were just as important as my stars mm -hmm. and I treated everybody the same. Mm -hmm. well, when did you make the transition to working with special needs kids? Uh, it was all by uh, this whole thing is uh, uh, it dates back to my daughter uh, almost nine years ago and this whole normal people scare me. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, doing two films a year as a producer and director and I always had this concept 
because I was getting kids out of UCLA and USC that didn't know their way around a set. Right. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if I could take like 10 kids that don't have, they're not going to go to college. Mm -hmm. They know they want to be in the film business. Mm -hmm. What if I started this workshop and they could work in any department or every department from the writing of the script or the breaking down of the script to the finished product and they could experience every department and I'll make that a business, you know, mm -hmm. and charge a fee for that, but they'll never be able to get that in college or anywhere. Oh. So it was a practical film experience. Right. So put that on the back shelf. So uh, it was a concept that I had always had. And we were doing classes for neurotypical kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter started a film festival at Chaminade High School. Mm -hmm. And she said, Daddy, would you, uh, would you help me out with it? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, uh, I'll give you a couple of camps. And I wasn't dealing with special needs kids at this time. Um, and uh, some classes, and I'll get you some publicity. Mm -hmm. So in the, uh, the uh, uh, Acorn, the little newspaper, right. uh, they did an article on the film festival and my relationship with the film festival and in the article it said I was a former special ed teacher mm -hmm. and that's where Carrie Bowers and Elisa Wolf uh, they approached me and said would you consider doing classes for special needs kids because mm -hmm. they're those kids are never included right so I said yeah I said you know we could do that I said but uh, you know you get the clients I'll be I'll supply the space the right. teachers and right. uh -huh. we'll give it a shot so uh, in that same conversation, uh, uh, Carrie had said, I have a son that wants to submit a film. Uh -huh. Can he submit a film? I said, as long as he's in high school, you know, what's it about? She said, what it's like to be autistic from an autistic kid's point of view. And mm -hmm. I said, well, that's, that's cool. I said, uh, let me see the film. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't know how to make a film. I said, well, that could be a problem, you know. <laughs> right, right. So be, yeah. I met with him, this big six foot five at 15 years old, and very kind of, not, I mean, he was interested in the whole thing, but I, I said, let me meet him, and then we'll go from there. And they told, they told me about what the concept was, and, uh, and I, uh, he was, like, playing with something, and on the ground there was, like, a pile of sawdust. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. what he was playing with. Mm -hmm very kind of disinterested until I said, well, this is what we'll do. Uh, you have to be responsible for doing the interviews. I'll supply a camera and an editor, and then I'll supervise it. But you have to do all the interviews, get all the kids and all that. And then uh, I got California Connected to do a documentary on it, mm -hmm. a piece. And Daily News came down the night of the screening. Mm -hmm. And this little 10-minute film uh, uh, not only it was such a big story that the Daily News did a follow-up the following mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Dennis, uh, what's his name? Dennis, uh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, he used to have his uh, uh, a big set. We had people from Ireland. We had people from India, mm. Italy. Every response all over the world wanting to know about this kid that made a film with autism. Okay. So Amazing. once he was empowered and knew it was going to happen, it was a whole slide in confidence. You, you know, hey, yeah. you know, I'm going to make a movie. Right. And it was a powerful, powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Filmmaking is a very powerful medium. And, uh, uh, you know, from that we did the feature length. And, uh, you know, it, uh, uh, then I started getting calls. Uh, could you come and do this with our kids? And, uh -huh. You know, so, I, you know, Oakland University, this will be the seventh year we're doing the camp there. And they have a big autism program. And, uh, and you know, we do five to seven camps a year. When so you do camps, right. you do the camps are for kids. camps for the kids, right? and then there's a distinction. You also have a program, correct? Yes. And what is the program? Uh, the program, so in dealing with all this, uh, the regional center had found out about uh, the, uh, the program, the, the one that I had told you about, yes. for typical kids to come and work on one of my films. They said, could you do that for our clients? Yes. So I came up with a program design, and uh, we implemented it probably it's almost four years now. Okay. And uh, basically it's a 20-week program. We take them through the whole process of making a film. Originally, we were going to have them work on films that I was making, but mm -hmm. it was so hard to time a film mm -hmm. and how that works with financing. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the concept of, well, let's develop a film in-house. Okay. And it's the same process, whether it's a 20-minute film or a, a two-hour film or a 
$10,000 budget or a $100 million budget, the process is the same and the process is where you learn. Okay, and wh how do, um, what ages is that aimed at? And uh, how it's do they 18 get it? and above. 18 and above. It's and funded how do they through the regional it? center. Okay, and do they go to inclusion films to your website yeah. to apply? Do they talk to their regional center they about it? They talk to their regional center uh, uh, coordinators about it. Okay. Yeah. We Great. do have some private pay, uh -huh. you know, because there are kids, uh, uh, Aspies, that fall through the cracks. Sure. And really, I designed it for. The, the higher functioning autistic. Okay. And for our viewers who are not in the state of California, is it possible that somebody can come from out of state yep. to join the program? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, and we, we're Exciting. both in Bakersfield, California, and in Burbank oh, here. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. Let's take a little break. Yeah. And then I want to come back. back and hear about specifically about the camps and about this camp yes. for the military families right. for people who have younger kids. Yeah. But for those families who have the 18 year olds who are always saying to us, what more is there? This is something you can something add great. to your list. And I want to hear some of your success stories too. We've met okay. a few of them. Okay, exciting. Right. So stick with us. We're going to be back with Joey Travolta in just a minute. Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism. I'm Nancy Allspar Jackson here with Shannon Penrod and our special guest, Joey Travolta of the Inclusion Films Program in Camps. And uh, Joey was just telling us how he got into uh, working with special needs children. Um, and now we were going to talk to him about how those camps work and the yeah. program works. Yeah, because you mentioned you have this program for the older kids, 18 and right. up, but you also have camps for younger kids. Yeah, and that's, uh, uh, I've been doing the camps now for seven years. Uh, uh, they're generally 50 kids. Okay. Uh, we try to do uh, a mixture of uh, 35 uh, with autism and 15 neurotypical to make it a full inclusion. Okay. Um, and uh, a lot of times it'll be siblings, so they get to meet other kids that are dealing with the same thing. And uh, uh, basically, it's a two week camp. It goes from 10 to three, five days a week for two weeks. And it's like the workshop. We just take them through the process of everything. We always have a theme. Um, we've done themes like uh, the really, really, really late show. And <laughs> it was, we'd have the host. And then generally, we break them into three groups and each group makes a short film. Okay. A, a three to five to seven minute film. But it usually goes into a show. Uh, we did, um, uh, the Junior Apprentice, I played Donald Trump. I had the radio. <laughs> I think oh, that Donald Trump. I want and, to that, that. and the assignment was to make uh, uh, a, a PSA for autism. Okay. So Did you wear a comb over? I wore a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was actually, I had a lot of fun doing it. Oh, that. And, um, and then uh, 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 this year we're going to do a takeoff on 60 minutes called 30 minutes. Oh, how wonderful. So we'll have the three hosts and do it just like the 60 minutes, but 30 minutes, and people will come on talking about their films. Yes. And I'm this, sure. this is the workshop we're doing this summer yes. with Joey um, and uh, in partnership with Cox Communications and ACT Today. And it is designed primarily for military children in the San Diego area or wherever. And uh, it's going to take place in the San Diego area. It's from June 18th to June 29th. We have about 20, um, 25 uh, applicants right now that have been approved. So we have room for 25 more, a mixture of kids uh, with autism and their siblings. And um, we want to encourage everybody to go online. I think Emily has the link for that. Uh, she does yes. right there. Uh, you can call us. You can go to that website address right there, acttodayformilitaryfamilies.org slash Cox Film Program, and, uh, or call our number there. Um, we are very excited about this and the opportunity to work with Joey, and we hope to be doing more of these camps around the country to help our kids on the spectrum get much needed um, job skills and just great social skills Absolutely. and all kinds of things that they come out of this with. Um, which I'm curious, what what kind of transformations have you seen with some of the children who have gone through your camps? Uh. Oh, I, especially the Detroit camp because it's now seven years and I've been okay. watching them grow. Yes. And, you know, I, I, when we first, the very first year we did it, the dean from the college, we were having dinner after, and uh, she said to me, she said, you don't know how special this camp is. 
And I go, oh, well, I said, thank you very much. She says, I've been watching you work with the kids and your staff work with the kids. And she said, in all the films that you made, how many films have you made? And I said, well, 20, 25. She said, have you ever changed someone's life? Mm. And I said, well, you know, I, I entertain people. I don't know about changing their, their lives. And she said, we don't know who it is in this group, but there's at least 10 to 12 out of this group of 50 that you will have impacted their life hmm. forever. And I'm thinking, wow, man, that's like, it was such, and now, you know, we expanded to seven cities and, you know, work with thousands of kids over the years and we're seeing that. We're seeing them want to go into the field. Yeah. But the big thing, and we've, you know, we've made uh, uh, provisions for that is, is the transition. Because transitioning out of school is very, very difficult. Oh, yes. We were talking you know? about that at the top <clears throat> of the show. Tell us a little bit about some of the transitions you've seen. And you actually do have graduates of your program in camps that are going on to work in the film industry. Yeah, um, well, not so much the, the, the because most of the camp, the kids are just Younger coming. Younger kids. But the two program. of them, uh, two of them work full time for me now. Oh, great. And one came on the road with me last year. Mm -hmm. He got to go all over the country. He'd never been out of the state of California. Uh, what kinds of things does he do for you in his role there? He's an editor. Okay. And wow. he works full time for my program up in Bakersfield. And I bet he's he an was excellent editor. He's an excellent editor. And it was very, very uh, cute because uh, we were traveling around. We were having a lot of problems with travel last year. And, and uh, we missed a plane. A plane was canceled. We get to Houston, and two of our, our employees are on the spectrum. And I had two other employees that were going to be left behind going to Pittsburgh. Wow. So I gave one of my guys, I gave him, you know, a credit card and cash. I said, make sure they get on the next plane because I was going to open the camp. Mm -hmm. I said, if you need to take a hotel, that's okay. Make sure these guys they're the first ones on the plane. Okay. Well, one of the other employees was his first time working. He really wanted to get on the plane, and he, you know, like kind of uh, pushed his way on the plane, and and uh, and uh, so he got on first. And my other guy made sure everybody was there, and they almost didn't make it. They ended up getting upgraded to first class. <laughs> and the other guy was mad because he didn't get on first class. So Paul, who was uh, in first class, the stewardess came up to him and said. Uh, what would you like to drink? And he says, well, how much does it cost? And she said, well, everything is free in first class, whatever you want. He said, I'll have a strawberry milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very, very cute. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. But he did a great. I mean, the, and now he's living on his own. He's got his own apartment. And, and he's wow. uh, high functioning autism, or high functioning autism. Okay. Yeah. How yeah, many? What percentage have, yeah. of autism versus other developmental? I know there's some Down syndrome. I know. Can you give yeah. us an idea of the kinds well, of mixture? Well, I, I, you know, in the workshops, I would probably say 50 to 60 percent autism. Yeah. Yeah, and they're in a very strong position to to succeed. We've and why is that, Joey? Well, because they're, they're, A, they're brilliant. It's a matter of recognizing that brilliance and finding out what their gift is, because everybody's got a gift. You've got to find out what the gift is. So we've been lucky in that we've been able to find gifts in, 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 the, in these young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's cultivating it and making them feel comfortable being around other people, communicating with other people. This is why filmmaking is so important mm -hmm. because everything that goes into filmmaking goes into everyday life. So you're learning social skills, you're learning communication skills under the guise of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because everything that you can name, accounting, building, wardrobe, all these things go into filmmaking. I mean, we're having, we have uh, several kids up in Bakersfield that have totally fallen, fallen between the cracks mm -hmm. in the school system. Right. And they've come to us, and they fit in. All of a sudden, they fit in. It's such so great. Money. How do we get this message out to the rest of the world, to the uh, film industry, to... Well, other... we, the, uh, there was an L.A. Times article on inclusion films, and from that, we've been getting quite a few calls. Um, we... Uh, Aaron Kaplan mm -hmm. uh, saw this article, and mm -hmm. he is a prominent TV producer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me right after the article and said, hey, man, I'm 
Aaron Kaplan, I have eight pilots. And, you know, usually anybody that says I have eight pilots is, you know, you know, I can see two pilots, but eight pilots. Yeah, right. but he, he goes, was telling the truth. He goes, you, he, goes, I, he goes, I'm telling you right now, he goes, I'm, I'm taking my 90-year-old uh, 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 grandmother out for breakfast now. I, you know, this isn't, I'm, I'm not throwing the bowl with you. I really want to help. <laughs> So we called, and then meetings kept getting canceled. But then all of a sudden, the pilot came up. He hired two of our kids. Great. Right. And one of them, um, uh, he, to give you an example, I was going to send somebody along with him to be there with him to make sure. And uh, the call time was 7. And at 6 o'clock in the morning, he was waiting. Oh. So as the crew pulls up, there he is. Right. <laughs> and... 7.30, Bill, who works for me at the yes. office, yes. calls me. He goes, they don't need me here. He's, they, he's already working. You know, he's already working. And now they're going to hire him on to work. Uh, it got picked up. So he's going to have a full-time job. How on this great area. is that? Yeah. How great is that? Now, incredible. You, we met um, a young woman that has been part of your program, uh, Danielle, Danny? Danny. She's Bowman. Brilliant. Brilliant. Is that her name? Yeah. And tell me about how she has written two books and they, uh, with her special animation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. can you well, tell we, us a little bit uh, about Danny? Well, John Martin and myself, we were writing a screenplay and and uh, this guy, Richard Willich, who had funded a couple of camps in Jacksonville, yes. had the story about a baby bull. Yes, it was that him he owned. Holding the uh, uh -huh. bull, and, and w he hadn't even met the writer yet, John Martin, who has a, a daughter with autism. Okay. And uh, said, uh, he comes in, he goes, hey, boys, I got a problem. Goes, What's the problem? He goes, well, he goes, I, I, I got to go talk to this, uh, the school district, and uh, they want me to uh, read this Dr. Seuss crap. I don't want to read that Dr. Seuss crap. He goes, I need you two to come up with a story. So we came up with this story about a bull that uh, strays away from the herd and uh, meets this little boy who's always being bullied. Yes. And so it was a cute story. I mean, you know, we didn't even think twice about it. And then I said, well, why don't you hire Danny? I can have her do the 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 uh, illustration for yeah. it. So they they hired her and she did two books for them and they're very sweet books. They're wonderful books. Um, My son Wyatt absolutely adores those books. They really strike a chord yeah. with kids. Yeah. And, and Jim, you got one for I got Jim. one for Jim and, and we he met loves it. We met Danny at the Autism Speaks Walk. She was mm -hmm. there with the books. Yeah. And she's just a delightful young she's woman. Delightful. Well, when I first met her, you know, she's quite prolific. She came out with me last summer and taught uh, animation. At oh, the so camp. she actually teaches animation. Well, at the we, camp. Uh, uh, Toon Boom is her, is the, I think it's Toon Boom or Boom. I have dyslexia, so. Um, anyway, they sponsored her last year to come out. She came to a couple of the camps. Okay. Um, but usually, anytime there's any kind of prodigy or uh, great story, they usually come to me, you know, for advice or, you know, whatever to see if there's some way we can collaborate. So, she came in one day and she was so adorable. She opened up her laptop and she doesn't call me Joey or Mr. Travolta. She calls me Joey Travolta. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you, Joey Travolta. Are you ready for the presentation, Joey Travolta? I go, yeah, sure. So she opens up her computer and has, you know, this type of presentation, color, uh, a brochure of all her characters. And uh, she opens a computer and she says, Captain Uran went to the, the planet Nebulous where she met her new friends, Nini and Feeney. Are there any questions, Joey? <laughs> I don't know, you're doing great. I said, go, go on. And she did this whole presentation. So I had a kid in the workshop mm -hmm. and his name was Uran, like her Captain Uran. Oh. And he does voices. Okay. So I said, Danny, would you like to meet uh, 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 Uran? He's got the same name as your Captain Uran, and, and he does voices. He says, well, can I do that, Joey Trevor? I said, of course you can. You can do whatever you want. So I bring Uran in. Uran is autistic as well, 22 years old. And I said, Danny, meet Uran. Uran, meet Danny. And I introduce them, and he gives him the written material. <sighs> And I'm standing here, her aunt and uncle are behind her, you're Danny. Okay. And he goes, well, first of all, uh, your Uran is spelled different than mine is. <laughs> and in order for me uh, to get involved with this, you would have to change 
to spell it. So Danny looks at me, can I do that, Joey Travolta? You can do whatever you want. It's your part. I said, Yaron also does cartoon voices. So I said, Yaron, do a cartoon voice for him. So he looks at me, he looks at me, he goes, I had sex with your wife last night. <laughs> <laughs> and I, now I know he probably heard it on the Cleveland show. Yeah, or, yeah or Family Guy. Family yeah, guy yeah. Visit. And I the go, Simpsons. you're on. I go, totally inappropriate. <laughs> I said, do you have anything to say for yourself? He goes, she was great. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm embarrassed. I'm going, oh my God. So I apologize to her aunt and uncle. He goes, no, don't worry about it. He goes, we totally understand. Actually, all of Danny's characters are different diseases, including venereal diseases. <laughs> like, and then the, the, the anecdote is like penicillin, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. so, up so they leave and Yaron comes back in. I said, Yaron, I said, I said, I said, you did, I said, that was so inappropriate. I said, I'm trying to train you to be in the workplace. <laughs> I said, and you, you have sex with my wife? I go, totally inappropriate. I said, he says, Joey, he says, it will not happen again. <laughs> and then he's going to leave and he told me, he says, Joey, he says, would it have been better if I had used Scooby Doo's voice? <laughs> <laughs> I could get out of here. Oh, but that's it's just, great. Oh, it's wonderful. So now, I Thank think you. we have a clip of something, right, Emily? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's take what? a look at the clip because when we come back, too, I want to know you had them do a project mm -hmm. uh, for your David Letterman uh, late yes. night piece yes. yeah, yeah. about the top 10 reasons, reasons to hire. And I want to I want to hear about that. But let's okay. take a look at what the do we know what the clip is? I'm not sure. Okay, well, we're going to take a look. <laughs> CBS News. CBS News. CBS All right, News. we'll take a look. Okay. In high definition, this is CBS 2 News at 5. He's the brother of a Hollywood superstar. You'll recognize the last name, but you may not be familiar with the first. But for up-and-coming film students, Joey Travolta is a superstar in his own right. CBS 2's Stacey Butler sat down with a filmmaker who's giving back after decades of being given the chance to realize his own dreams. Paul, his last name makes him Hollywood royalty, but it's his heart that may well make Joey Travolta a legend. Not among the industry elite, but to a growing number of people with disabilities who until now have never had a chance to shine. Before he received a degree in special education, before he was a film director, actor, and musician, before he was ever known for being the brother of an acting icon, Joey Travolta rotated tires at his dad's body shop in New Jersey. We grew up in a very uh, kind of blue-collar neighborhood in the, in the midst of, you know, a lot of racial tension and, and just a very tough time in the, in the 60s. And my father was just, everybody was welcome at our table. Everybody, he treated everybody equal and he treated everybody with respect. And that's what, you know, when you treat people with respect, they'll treat you with respect. And that's something that my father taught me. Now, 30 years later. You never know what, you never know what can happen. Joey Travolta. I believe everybody has a gift. Is putting the lessons his father taught him to practice. <laughs> what these kids have to give us, they're, they're the teachers, because they teach they teach us how to be the way my father was. My father was tolerant, my father was inclusive. After directing 20 films, Travolta could have retired. I got the golden ring. This is the golden ring, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Instead, John's big brother is using his expertise and Hollywood connections to return to his first order, love. You sort of do an expression like, oh, brother. Good, and it's gonna be which tape? Bye. Helping the developmentally disabled learn the movie business. And it is a real set. It's a practical experience. The difference is they work alongside the pros. That's how they get their experience. Work it. Inclusion Films started as a short film camp. Two parents uh, who have uh, children with autism had approached me about doing classes for special needs kids. Grubby Octopede and Master Splinter. Your pizzas are ready. Now as part of a full-time vocational program, his students are casting a short film. An actor comes in and I'm sure they think it's, you know, you know, what, what is this, you know? It is the first film written and directed by a Southland man 
who has autism. Working on a movie, it was like the one time I didn't feel like I had anything wrong with me. But some do find work as editors and production crew. This is the first time in my life that I can sort of be myself. In an industry known for casting off those who don't fit the mold. How many times, are, you know, with someone with special needs are asked their opinion on something? You know, and, well, what do you think about this? Joey Travolta makes it his business to include them. I feel like everything in my life is, has brought me to this point. I, I want to be remembered for the work I'm doing now, you know. Uh, I, I'm hoping that someday, you know, Tyler or one of these other kids, you know, uh, or, you know, make their own film and, you know, go on to do great things. And that they become a, someone who is appreciated in society. Inclusion Films relies on a number of sponsors, including the Lanterman Regional Center. A spokesperson there called Travolta's program visionary and invaluable to the students. For more on Inclusion Films and autism, just go to our website, cbs2.com, and click on Seen on TV. Laura? All right, thank you so much, Stace. A controversial law that allows terminally ill patients to end their lives when in Okay. Welcome back. So inspirational. Uh, you know, that gave a great overview. It just occurred to us we should have shown that at the top of the hour, but that's okay. Now people know more about Joey Travolta uh, and your wonderful program. And Shannon and I were just saying, you know, we have to salute the regional center yeah. for yeah. seeing the value in this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They, well, you know, uh, they, they also see the important, and, and it's, it's been a problem trying to get people to hire. Sure. You know, it's a, you know, and I guarantee you, when you hire, they will be the best employee that you have. What a wonderful endorsement. This is great. And you mentioned that you did this project late night, late night and that you, they did the top 10 reasons yeah. why you should yeah. hire someone well, uh, with we, autism. Uh, well, did, uh, we did a takeoff on the Letterman, and they did right. the whole roll down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the number one reason to hire people with autism. Okay. And that is that someday they could be your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. And in the light of all the, you know, tech companies and all that. that yeah, especially in the television business and the film business, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we know that, uh, look at Mark Zuckerberg, not your average guy there right. in the hoodie and the, you know, no, the things he does. Exactly. So you exactly. never know where your next genius billionaire is going to come from, That's people. That's right. So, um, and Joey, I had a great experience um, being interviewed by uh, another Hollywood royalty in, the, in a family of Hollywood royalty, uh, Joe Montaigne, the yeah. great actor mm -hmm. uh, who is the star of Criminal Minds and is also um, very active with ACT Today and yeah. our program for military families. He hosted our PSA uh, that runs and he also uh, is the host of our golf tournament in, later in August. And Joe's daughter, uh, Mia attended yes. your program. And she's a makeup artist, too. She's she a makeup is, artist. Uh, she's a doll. She's just, uh, she's very into uh, dates of birthdays, and the first thing she'll ask you is, oh, hi, what's your name? And then, yes. when were you born? Yeah. And then you were Libra, you know, whatever it right. is. And then she'll never forget it. Right. Wow. And she's so cute, because I always say, oh, Mia, you're never going to remember my birthday. October 14th, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's a beautiful young woman. And, and she's a very good uh, a makeup artist. We have our own little show, Mia's Makeup Artist. Great. Wow. And she also did a wonderful job, CBS, who has another great supporter of the autism world, Steve Malden, yes. who has a daughter with autism. Yeah. He ran a segment on inclusion films, and Mia, and Mia was yeah. the reporter, and she interviewed Mia as part of that. Yeah. And she just did such a great job. Yeah. She really well, did. Well, it's great. These news uh, stations, it's a great way to give groups like ours exposure. And uh, even uh, uh, at NBC up in Bakersfield, we're, we're getting a story a month that we produce, mm -hmm. that we write, and our kids are the reporters for it. Okay. And we interview the subjects, we do it exactly the way they do it, how the big boys do it. Mm -hmm. The great thing is they get the work experience and then they get to see the results. Wonderful. You know? and, and I think that's, one of the great things about filmmaking is that you do see results. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's an end product. Yeah. Whether you were a grip or an electrician or an actor or a writer, because there's so many facets of filmmaking, yeah. you, you're, you become a team, you become a family. 
and that's Wonderful. what they're excluded from. Yeah. They're a part of a gang. Exactly. Filmmaking gang. It's a, yeah. it's a wonderful it's a, What a group to be part of. And yeah. as a parent, I am so interested in this. I mentioned before we brought you in that I have a, I have a son. He's turning nine in a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And he has been dinging at me forever. He wants to make a film. He has an okay. idea for a film. He wants okay. to make a film. Okay. So this is of deep interest to me. Um, but I'm curious, as a parent, how you deal with kids of different abilities. Um, that you've got a group of kids. We, we have a bar that we raise. Okay. Okay. And we expect the most that. Out of it. I love that. And wherever right. they start, we help them and lift them up. You assume them, intelligence. You assume, assume ability rather than the opposite. I don't talk opposite. down to anybody. Thank you. Right. I don't. Uh, the way I talk to you is the same way I talk to the kids, and and my staff is like that too. You so know, wonderful. I have a great group of uh, people that that work for me. Yeah. But I am an opportunity creator. Yeah. I create opportunities for people. Yeah. And. It just happens to be through filmmaking. Well, it's a wonderful thing. You're the real deal. It's a very cool I am thing. the real you deal. You are the real deal. <laughs> It's I true. want to say one more thing about yeah. our camp that's coming up. Yeah. Uh, Cox Communications, who is partnered with us on this yeah, and funding that's it. That's fantastic. Um, they are planning on, we're going to be showing yes. the film mm -hmm. yeah. at the San Diego Film Festival. Yeah. And we're going to be having a big red carpet premiere down there. So yeah. this is going to be a really great opportunity. And I think it's tied into the San Diego Film Festival. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. tied into the San Diego yeah. Film Festival. We're going to have a red carpet premiere yeah. of the film so the kids will be able to go to that and uh, that's the most so cool. exciting thing when they when they oh, see yeah. it with their families and they see their name up there and see them because I do the part of the the greatest part of uh, for me is doing interviews I interview the kids right and uh, last year uh, I we did this whole segment on uh, who do you look up to mm -hmm. and they would talk oh my mom I said one to the camera tell mm -hmm. tell your mom tell your dad how you feel just oh. you're, so I had this one kid, and I said, I said, I said, who who do you look up to? And he said, the ceiling downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that literal thing. I said, literal. Well, go. I said, I want you to tell the ceiling downstairs how you feel. He gets up and walks out of the room. He was going downstairs to tell. This is hard. Was, oh no, it's such a yeah. great story. The literalness of it, but right. you have been such a great guest and oh, so wonderful, energized. I know both of us, Shannon yes. and I, oftentimes we have guests on the show and we're just like, wow. You know, to see somebody that's doing such great things with our children, such practical, needed things, is just so inspiring, Joey. It's and a just as a mom of a child with autism and the uh, you know sister of a brother with together. Down syndrome. Yeah. We're all in this together. And, you know, we want to make it the best for our kids. And that's, Wonderful. you know, that's what we do. I want to go briefly over some of the logistics because we okay. talked about three separate things okay. that parents are going to want information on. So yeah. if they've got an 18 year old or older, or that they want to get into your program. Yeah. Who do they need to contact? Uh, they... Well, they should contact their service coordinator. Okay. And if they're not, just get in touch with us through the website. Uh, Inclusion, Inclusion Films. Films. Okay. Because if yeah. you're in California, it's covered by the regional yeah. center, which means they're going right. to be able to do it. Yeah. And they got free. the email I mean, up there. One, one of the things that we do uh, in Bakersfield, we even have kids in Kern County that come from outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they stay at a hotel and yeah. they provide sure. wraparound service and. And uh, uh, so it's kind of cool because that's even, you Okay, know. awesome right. opportunity. But if you're not in California, you have the possibility of uh, coming in, coming possibly in from, and staying from out somewhere. Of state and stay. yeah. Okay, then for the military families. For the Activate the for Military Families yeah. program with the Cox uh, film program this summer, June 18th through June 29th. Emily's got it up there again. Mm -hmm. You can call us. You can write us at Act Today there, very simple, or you can go on the website. There is an application. We are encouraging people to apply. Um, and also for your kids that are not on the autism spectrum, because we want siblings. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is inclusion. So we want both kids on the spectrum and uh, their family members that are not on the spectrum to come with them. And I'm going to be coming down to visit that camp, Joey. I can't wait to okay. see what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have that big red carpet premiere later, oh, I think, in the early yeah. fall. 
and it's just it's going to be such an amazing experience for Absolutely. our kids. I really encourage you to it's go after be wonderful. this program. And then for families who are not military families who have younger kids mm -hmm. who want to do one of the camps, you do those in seven different cities. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, we've done them in seven. This year we're going to be in uh, St. Mary's. Okay. Uh, uh, in up in the Bay Area. Okay. Then we'll be in Pittsburgh. Okay. okay. And then we're going to be in New Jersey. All right. At my where I went to college. Uh, well, where I went to junior college. It's now okay. St. Peter's College. Now. Okay. Okay. And then uh, in Detroit at Oakland University, but they list it on the on the website. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Good. So go to the website. That's where you're going to get the most mm -hmm. information because yeah. this is a wonderful opportunity yeah. for all. And of our you know, kids. maybe there's if if there's something where a family's interested and they can't get it through regional, maybe they could apply for a grant through Act Today. We could maybe there work on go. that too. Wonderful thing. Okay. Thank you so much for all the work that you do and for My coming pleasure. here and sharing My with pleasure. us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure.